Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Breaking Games Expansity. Expansity is for two to four players, 69 minutes, and about ages 12 and up to play the game. In Expansity, you're going to be playing a city building game that is based on action management. You're going to have your little cities here that you'll be utilizing, placing tiles down the board, attaching these buildings to them, and scoring points. You're going to have a little scoreboard tracker here, which you're going to go across from one all the way to 50. When you hit 50, you'll go back up, adding more of a city to it, which is interesting because it'll make it look bigger and bigger while still building the city with everybody else. There's three types of tiles. You're going to have these building sort of tiles that are going to give you bonus points if you build around them. You're going to have commercial residential, commercial and residential tiles as well, and those you'll be using for two different uh, portions of the game, which will score you points based on some certain rules with them. Not only that, but you're also going to come with different uh, objectives throughout the entire game, as well as objective cards will help you too. The game is a glorious looking game, as you can see, and I will show you down below exactly how good it looks, and then we'll talk about um, a little bit of how the gameplay works and my review of it. So here we have Expansity and everything included. Here is the box right here. It's big and beautiful and has a little insertion spaces. It's got a nice big thick rule book and then it has the scoreboard tracker here. These are the tiles in the game. They're gonna come with the commercial tiles. It's gonna come with the residential tile and it's also gonna come with ooh, a starting tile and your buildings here. They're gonna give you bonuses for your, comer your commercial and your residential. They'll be randomized though, and you're gonna get them randomly, and you'll be drawing them from this bag over here. These are contract cards, and based on when you build buildings, whether they're residences or commercial buildings, you'll be able to draw two of these and pick one of them. And if you complete them, you can go ahead and turn them in whenever you want to gain points. There's also tops of buildings that you actually put on the top of your little buildings here. Uh, there are two different types. You've got the commercial ones, which are going to have this little dome shape, and then you've got the residential, which will have this flat shape. These are the uh, end of game uh, scores. You're gonna start with three of them at random. So you're just gonna shuffle these up and deal three out. And they're gonna have things like the whoever has the tallest tower, whoever has the most commercial buildings completed, and whoever has the most contracts, which are these completed. You're just gonna put them at the beginning of the game along with this tile here, which is the starting tile. It's just a place in which you can play tiles. When you play tiles, you have to play adjacent to an already previously existing tile. Each of these are the turn order cards that also have little player references for the symbols and what are going to be included in this stack of tiles here. There might only be one hospital or one uh, stadium, but there'll be other things and it'll show you based on the cards here. You're also going to select a color and get all of the buildings for that specific color. So if I go ahead and say I'm playing a green versus blue over here, I'll move these over here. Uh, the rest of these are not going to be needed in a two-player game, but I, of course, can play up to four. You're going to start with six of these buildings to begin the game with, and then you're going to take your other one that you're not using in the stack of seven and place it over here on your scoring marker area. That is going to symbolize how many points you start off with in the game. You'll have a pool of, of buildings to pull from, and then you're going to have your stack in which you go ahead and use on your turn. Each player is going to get two randomly selected tiles from this bag here that will be put in this bag, and uh, they're going to be able to use actions on their turn. Now, the first thing that's going to happen is if you look at one of these player reference cards over here, I'll go ahead and pull one, it will tell you uh, zoning, building, completing, and planning. First, you're going to place a tile from your hand, any tile you want, and then you're going to go ahead and uh, take three actions. Three actions are going to consist of only two different things that you can do, either placing a building down on a location or taking a building from your supply and putting it into your pool. The rules for building are pretty simple, uh, almost as simple as placing a tile, it has to be adjacent. In this case, you can place one building down uh, per turn on each of the spaces that you have available that are not currently uh, completed. So this would be a completed building but you could not put two down. So that would be one action. You could not do this as a secondary action. However, if you had, let's say, an extra one of these tiles here that was open, you could say that's two actions. And then for your third action, you could take one from this pool over here. And that's the main rules for that. When you are um, going, after you've taken your three actions, so that's one, and then you're gonna do two, three, your next thing you're going to do is complete. If you want, you can complete any residential that's, that starts off at one. And as you complete it at one, you can go then to two and three and four. And for commercials, you have to get to four. And if you complete four, you can go to five to six and to seven. You can keep doing that provided you have the previously completed uh, amount of buildings required on that space. You are not allowed to complete a commercial until it hits four and you can't complete a residential until it hits one, but it will also follow the same rules based on what you have completed 
throughout the game. So if you have a, a resident that is one story and a resident that's two story and they're both completed, you can go up to three stories, but you don't have to. You can always complete them based on the main rule, which is one and four, one for residential, four for commercial. You're also gonna always be following these along, the tallest tower, the uh, com commercial, the most commercials completed, which are these buildings here. And then of course, the most of these contract cards completed. Uh, after you've gone ahead and decided to complete buildings, if you can, which in this case he can't, you're then going to do your planning, which is going to draw two of these tiles here. You're going to go ahead and pick one of them and put the rest back in the bag shuffled up. Then uh, your turn is done. The next player will get to go. They're going to go ahead, to go ahead and place one of their tiles down. We can go ahead and place one of these down, which is pretty interesting. It'll give bonuses to adjacent tiles that match the color. This is plus one to green adjacent tiles and plus one to blue adjacent tiles. These will only benefit non-completed tiles because once you complete them, that's when you're going to score. So placing down that would be uh, a rather poor choice right now in a two-player game because it's not going to benefit him currently. So instead, he'll probably play this one right here. After he plays that one right here, he's going to go ahead and take his three actions. That'll be one action and then two and three to get two more buildings here. And then after that, he can go ahead and choose to complete. Now, this is a residential, so you'll only need to start with uh, one. So you can go ahead and complete that if he wants. And if he completes that, he's going to score points. And how you score is pretty simple. You'll score the base, plus you're going to score any bonuses. So for instance, this one over here, if this, if this was here, that's a plus two to green right there. That would be base, which is one, plus two green, which is three, times the number of the height. So that would be three points. One times three is three points. And you would move on this tracker over here to three points. So that's how scoring works. After you go ahead to score based on how tall it is and how many bonuses you have around you, you're then going to draw two of these contract cards and pick one. Contract cards are pretty simple. They're going to either uh, give you up to, uh, it's like two to 12 points based on what it asks you to do. This one says you need to control a single building that's next to a stadium and a park. And it of course tells you on the card what symbols are required uh, in order to be placed. So this says you can be residential or commercial because it's green or it's blue. And then a park is of course going to be the little tree and the stadium is going to be the soccer ball. If you've done that, you can go ahead and turn this in at any point in time to score nine points. This one over here says uh, you need to complete at least two commercial buildings of six or more. So if you have six uh, or more, two of them, commercial towers, you can go ahead and score nine points with this. Pick which whatever one you want, put the other one on the bottom of the deck and keep that until you can score it, which actually be for green over here. And then, of course, you'd follow the same rules as uh, of play, which would be to draw two of these tiles here, pick one of them, and put the rest in, and put the other one in the bag. And the game's going to continue like that, where players are going to continue to play down uh, these locations. That uh, would be one action there. That would be two actions. Then he would take his third action by drawing from here. And uh, he, he would then choose, if he wanted to, he can go ahead and complete, and he can score his points. He would score one times one, because there's one and one here, moving him on the track. So let's say they're both here. Uh, and then he's get to draw his two contract cards as well. This one here says a two by two grid of uh, of controlling buildings. So he'll take that one. That's a good one that's worth a lot of points. And uh, then he's going to go ahead and draw his two tiles and he'll go ahead and pick one of them. Uh, and after that, be the next player's turn. Continue. And the board is going to get bigger and bigger. This is going to have a large table space because there's going to be a lot of tiles going down. Once all the tiles have been placed, then you're going to play the rest of the tiles in your hand. And then after that, you're going to score any points uh, from bonuses, whether it be from these or any contract cards you haven't played. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game, Expansity. The last little interesting thing to note is as you score points on this little track here, let's go ahead and move it over here. Let's say you're blue and you scored 50 points uh, and then you score one more point. Well, you're going to go back to one here, but you're also going to take one of your uh, tiles from one of your uh, one of your little buildings here from the pool and place it up here, which references that you have scored 50 points. Everybody will be doing that and you'll be going across the board a number of times, depending on how number, the number of players in the game, which will also depend on the number of points. And that's the basic idea for Expansity. All right, let's come up and talk about this little SimCity type game. If you haven't guessed, I love Expansity. This game has everything going for it. I love the style of artwork. I love the theme of the game. I love the nostalgia that brings back SimCity. I like the fact that when you build things around the table, you're actually going to be building a city that looks like a city and feels like one because based on how your building is going to determine points, and those points matter because if you're building on a park, you're going to be scoring based on residentials because residentials want to be near parks. When you're building different things like stadiums, you want to be near commercials, and that's going to score more points. So the city actually fleshes out like a city provided that you build to score as many points as possible. Now you don't have to do that as well. You can build however you want, provided you follow the basic rules of the game, and that'll score you more or less points. But in turn, even if you just build a lot of small buildings, you get these contract cards, which can give you a ton of points. So winning the game can be of two different ways, using these contract cards, or simply building the highest building with the most points surrounding you, giving you the most bonuses. You could also choose to do a little bit of both. 
with two and three and four players, the game works. You can play regardless of how many players is in the game, and it feels fun regardless. You're going to have these little contract car, or these these main contracts, I should say. They're going to score you points at the end of the game, and if you get them, they are worth quite a good amount. Twelve points is a solid amount, which can make the difference. So you're going to be actually following the directions of those cards to start with for how you want to play the game. Then, as you gain these smaller contract cards, you'll be following these ones along with those ones, along with the fact that you'll be scoring points on the board. So you have a certain path that you can choose to follow or not follow. It has a little bit of a ticket to ride feel in the game, which is very nice because it's it's just slightly in there, but it, it's the best of that game. I enjoy this game thoroughly. This is much better than Ticket to Ride in my opinion, I do like Ticket to Ride, but I also like the feel of all the different pieces. I like the holding the buildings and placing them down and making my big tall towers. I like the fact that you can kind of mess over your opponents, but it's not really a take that game. You can just place things you don't, uh, they, they don't want next to them. There's another rule in the game that says if there's an empty uh, building space next to one of your buildings, you're going to get minus one to your total score, minus one to your multiplier score based on the amount of multipliers around. So you can actually score negative points in a building if players don't want to be nice to you, which is a nice way of doing a little bit of take that. But of course, you can counter that by placing buildings on those locations, but then it blocks you off because you can only have three unbuilt buildings at any point in the game. It is really fun. The only thing this game is really missing, the only two critiques, is one, this bag. We've already talked about it with uh, Peter Vaughn. Uh, this this bag is way too small. I can't use it uh, for putting all these tiles in here. I can't pull them out. Uh, but luckily, from what I hear, they're going to actually be making a bigger bag, and there'll be a bunch of expansions to this game, which I don't know if I can talk about or not. But what I can say is if you do like the original SimCity games, this is an amazing game. And if you like the idea of Bowser destroying the city, there might be something involving that with this game as well in the later expansion. Um, overall, excellent game. I, I don't think there's anything I really don't like about it other than just basically the bag. And of course, it can be a little bit uh, competitive and have a little bit of a take that in nature if you're not into a little bit of that uh, back and forth with your opponents. It's definitely better, in my opinion, with four players, just because I like playing with more players overall. But I had a great time playing two players with this game as well. Overall, solid game. This is definitely going to be in my top five list of this year, if not even my top three list. It's, it's, it's that much fun. I'm very excited to see the additional content with it. People that are going to like city building games, they like tableau management, they like tile placement, you're going to enjoy this game hands down. I don't think I've ever heard anybody... Uh, say much negative. We only had one guy who just really wasn't into it for our live stream, which you can actually watch. We did it this week, a live stream of the game. And I think it was just a little bit too complex uh, as far as how, how you build and what you build. But after that first game, or rather after about six or seven turns, you really get into it, you really understand, and you also get to know these contract cards and how you want to build the buildings. Uh, like one of my friends was saying, oh, I would have never let you done that. Well, that's because these players are new and they hadn't played the game and I had, so next time they play, they also will let me do those certain moves, like getting a two by two grid of either residential or commercial. That's a very powerful thing to do, especially if you have the contract card that gives you 12 points, which is basically the equivalent of one of these things. But yes, it's fun. It's great. I love the, the the solid table presence of this game. People will see this game and say, I want to play it just when they look at it based on how it feels and it looks on the table. And once they get into it, they're going to pick it up. If you haven't heard of this game, and it sounds even remotely interesting, definitely check out Expansity. Breaking Games did an excellent job with this game. My full seal of approval. Do check it out in the description below.